Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna try to create this part using on shape. Now this part's a little bit tricky. It's got this kind of tombstone shape that's sticking up here, but it's leaning back at a compound angle. And so today I'll show you some tips and tricks on how you can create geometry like this. Ow! Okay, so all of the challenges that I post on this 3D modeling practice playlist include a timer. So you can time yourself, you can challenge yourself to finish this model as quickly as possible. And so I'm just gonna roll back here so I can start the timer and then we can talk ourselves through this challenge. So one of the things that I always encourage my students to do is anytime you're looking at a 2D print, try to come up with a basic game plan before you jump into the 3D modeling software. And in the case of this model here, I think that the game plan is gonna be for us to start by creating this rectangular base here. This rectangular base here has the dimensions of three inches by four inches. And I think it's a great place to start on this model because it's gonna set us up nicely to create the foundation for this tombstone. Now, what I mean by the foundation for this tombstone is we know that this edge here is supposed to be 2.5 inches wide. We know that that, that line, that edge starts at this this corner 1.125 and ends down here uh, at a distance of 2.375 from this corner. And so that's gonna really help us to set up the location of that edge. We are gonna need one more dimension to lock that edge in place. And that dimension is gonna be this guy here, one inch plus 0 0.5 from this edge of that rectangular base to get us to the middle of that line. Now, once we have that line sketched, we can use that line to create a plane at an angle of 75 degrees, and then we should be set up nicely to create this tombstone shape. So that's kind of the basic game plan. We'll start out with that rectangular base. We'll create that angled tombstone, and then we'll go back in and add our fillets and our counter bores. I know that took us about a minute and 20 seconds to come up with that game plan, but trust me, it's worth it to take your time to look over the drawing before you start modeling. And that way you can create the best possible geometry that's really gonna lend itself to making edits. So if you like the idea of coming up with a game plan, well, go on down and hit that like button on this video. And if you like this type of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. That way you'll be notified when the next video comes out. All right, let's jump over into OnShape here. I'm gonna move this drawing onto my second screen and I'm gonna create a new document called 06-07B Anchor Base. If you have an OnShape account, you could use the free account, onshape.com slash free. You could get in here to the public space and you can search for this text string and you could actually find this model that I'm creating so you could look over the feature tree and, and examine a little bit deeper how I'm building this thing. So I'm gonna start out here on the top plane and begin a sketch, and I'm gonna create a sketch of a rectangle. I'm gonna use the center point rectangle option, and I'm gonna use some auto dimensioning. Now, it looks like I forgot to go in and change my units ahead of time, but that's okay. I can just type in here four space IN, and I can type in here three space IN, and then from there, what I can do is I can take that geometry and extrude it up to a height of 0 0.5 space IN. And OnShape is able to do that uh, unit translation for me on the fly. And then I can go back into my options, workspace units. You know, obviously I probably should have done this first, but it's okay. If you, if you get started with the first sketch and you forget, it's okay. You can just go in and type in space IN. And then after you're done, you can go in and change this to inches and change this to pounds. All right, so let's just uh, double click on that, that feature, three inches by four inches. Yep, that's what I wanted. Let's create a new sketch now on this top surface. Now this sketch is going to be of a single line kind of coming down at an angle. And then I'm gonna use those dimensions that I called out on the print. I'm gonna create this corner here at a distance of 1.125. I'm gonna create this line here at a distance of 2.375. I'm gonna drop in a midpoint on this line here. So just drop in a midpoint. And that way I can create a dimension to that midpoint. And that dimension is going to be at a distance of 1.5. And I can give this line an overall length here of 2.5. And we can see that once we put in that fourth dimension, that line goes black, meaning that the sketch is fully constrained. And that is exactly what we want. Now, at this point, we're just going to exit that sketch. We're going to use that sketch to create a plane. And we're going to also use that sketch to help define this lower line or this lower edge of the tombstone. But we're not going to create the entire tombstone until we have our plane kind of angled back at that compound angle. So now we're gonna select that line, 
and we're gonna select this face here, a little bit of pre-selection. I talked about creating planes in another video and some shortcuts you can use, and this is one of those shortcuts is to pre-select the geometry. And that way, as soon as I click the plane command, I'm automatically placed in the line angle plane type. So I don't have to go through and choose the plane type that I want. I'm just automatically in the line angle plane type. And that's gonna be at an angle of 75 degrees. We can look at this model here, make sure we're going the correct direction. It looks like we're not going the correct direction. So let's flip the direction of that angled plane using that flip direction or opposite direction icon. Hit the green check mark. And now we've got the perfect plane to begin sketching our tombstone shape. So we'll click this plane back here, this plane one, and we will begin a new sketch. And now we will take that edge that we created and just convert it into the current sketch. And then we're gonna create a line that is perpendicular to that line. So there we can see that perpendicular relationship. We'll come back, we'll touch the end point, we'll come around here like so, and then we will create uh, another line here. And then we will take this line and make sure that it is perpendicular to that baseline as well. So we'll give that the uh, relationship here of perpendicular. And now we're gonna add one more dimension. That dimension is gonna be two inches to the center here. Boom, we've got a nice fully defined sketch. That's always what we're going for. And so now let's take that and extrude that out to a depth of 0 0.375. And that is our tombstone shape on that angled or compound angled plane. And that is looking pretty darn good. So let's go in now and add some of our counter bores. Uh, this first counter bore here is going to have a uh, outer diameter of uh, 1.5, a depth of 0 0.125, and a through hole of 0 0.75. So let's jump into the whole creator tool here in Onshape. And in the whole creator tool, we're going to say that the, the through diameter is 0 0.75. We're going to say that that outer diameter is 1.5 and the depth of the counter bore is 0 0.125. And then for our whole placement, well, we don't have any sketch points, so it's going to be hard for us to select that whole placement. Now, we could go back and show the sketch of the tombstone, but what's a little bit easier is you can click this icon here, select Mate Connectors, and that way you can just wake up the center of that arc and drop that counter bore right at the center of that arc. A very nice little shortcut in on shape. Uh, if, you're, if you're a pro, you learn all about Mate Connectors, and you also learn that you can use Mate Connectors in coordination with the whole creator to really save time. So we're gonna hit the green check mark there. That gives us that counter bore. Now, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to use that same shortcut down below here. So I am gonna create a new sketch down below here. I am gonna use the center point rectangle and I am gonna use the auto dimension functionality to define a rectangle here at three by two inches. I dropped it right on the origin because I know just from basic math that that rectangle is centered. And then I'm gonna exit that sketch and jump back into the whole creator tool. This time the hole is going to have a through hole diameter of 0 0.375, a counter bore diameter of 0 0.75, and once again, a depth of 0 0.125. So let's go and assign those parameters. So the through hole 0 0.375, the counter bore diameter 0 0.75, and the depth of 0 0.125. And then we can just start picking these points from that sketch that we just created. Onshape is smart enough to know exactly which direction those counter bores should go. And so now the last feature to add here is just gonna be the fillet. So we'll jump into the fillet command here and we're gonna say that fillet's gonna have a radius of 0 0.375 and that is gonna go on this edge, on this edge, on this edge, and on this edge. We hit the green check mark. We can press the P key on our keyboard to hide all that extra plane geometry. And now we'll do what's called the final spin. We'll kind of like spin this thing and rotate it around. I think that's looking pretty good. And so we're gonna do a right mouse button here. We're going to choose to edit the material or assign the material. That material is gonna come from the Too Tall Toby custom library of materials. And that material is going to be 1060 aluminum alloy per the title block on the print. And so now I'm gonna just click on any face on the model. I'm gonna go down here to the mass properties icon and we're gonna find that this part has a mass of 0 0.777 pounds. And so if I come back over here to the print, I can see that my timer is at about nine minutes and four seconds. I'm gonna pause the print, pause the timer, remember that time, and I'm gonna to go to the end and we see that we did get the correct answer. Yes, 0 0.777 pounds. 
And that is the thought process that I would go through to create that model in Onshape. I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial. And again, if you did, be sure to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments if you have any questions for me.